The word of God has become attached to you. Not to worry. We will coax it out. Don't tell me. You're gonna sing me a lullaby. Leave that to the angels. We prefer jolts of high voltage electricity. Hey guys, Ryan and Gaz here, and we're back breaking down another episode of Preacher. This is episode eight. It's called The Tom Brady. Yeah, but before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button as we'll be breaking down every episode of Preacher this season, and we're breaking down Castle Rock. Now guys, there are obviously major spoilers ahead. If you haven't watched episode eight, go do that, and then come right here and we can talk about the episode. Now overall, episode eight is a lot of setup for mm -hmm. the final two episodes, which a lot of stuff has to happen. Yeah, like right now, Jesse has to get Genesis back. Actually, first break free from the control yeah. that the Allfather has on him. Hair Star is gonna be revealed to likely be a traitor, like as, whether Jesse rats him out or whether something crazier happens with that whole dynamic. Yeah, and, and then also in, down in Angelville with Grandma. Yeah. I mean, she wants her souls. She obviously doesn't want to go to hell, we learn. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I don't know if that deal with the devil is going to go exactly how she has it planned out. No, but I'm curious what the new deal that she wants to set up is. Because her old deal kind of gave her immortality as long as she keeps feeding souls. Mm -hmm. What does she want different other than getting Tulip out of the way? Uh, he's a, uh, uh, he is, he is. Johnny! <laughs> <laughs> hey, beautiful. Your hideousness. We're good, kid. Go, uh. Hump a duck, whatever it is you're into these days. All right, so let's first talk about Satan and Grandma. Um, I think it says a lot about Grandma's position of power in this world when Satan is the one that comes to visit you and not vice versa. Right, like it shows that she has that diabolical relationship. I mean, the very relationship that allowed her the ability to eat souls. Like Satan granted her that power. Yeah. Like what kind of relationship did they have for Satan to grant her that power? Yeah, that's a good, that's a really good point. And basically, uh, he, he alludes to the fact that, like, at some point, he's waiting for her to get back down to hell. Either yeah. that she's been there before, or she's visited, or she's been on, so, uh, on the brink of death, that she's mm -hmm. almost, uh, almost within his grasp. Right. But interestingly enough, none of this stuff was how it went in the comics. No, she was more of a woman of God in the comics. Like, not to say she was a good person by any right. means. No, not at but all. But it was more that she always wanted her, the men of her family to be preachers or to be in the service of God. Whereas here, she is fully in the employment of the devil himself. So part of the new deal that Satan and Grandma make is basically Grandma wants Tulip out of the picture. Yeah. Um, it, she's definitely, um, you know, she's a distraction for Jesse and, and a reminder that Jesse is not going to stay put in Angelville. Yeah, but that really says something about Tulip that Grandma holds her in such high regard that mm -hmm. she would go to the devil himself to take her out of the picture. Right, it's 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 kind of odd because you think that Grandma could do that on her own, or have her and have Jody and TC take care of that, right. or the Grail take care of that. But she went straight up to Satan to ask mm -hmm. Satan to get rid of Tulip, um, and then in exchange, I guess she would give the information to Satan about Genesis. Right. It's an interesting deal because I guess it takes Tulip out of the picture where it looks like she never betrayed Jesse's trust and is a, a, her own conniving way of controlling Jesse once more. I've got a job for you. So Satan is going to use the Angel of Death, Sydney, who we met a few episodes ago, to track down Tulip. But the Angel of Death in the TV show is much different than what we saw in the comic books. Right. In the comics, the Angel of Death did not really care for the job that he was supposed to have. Mm -hmm. Whereas Sydney, at least so far from what we've seen, seems to be okay with her job, maybe a little like tired, but seems okay with following like the devil's bidding. Also a little incompetent when tracking down particular people, but we'll right. get to that. <laughs> she had no information and did not do a good job looking into that information. Yes. But yeah, in the comics, it was one of those things where the angel of death wanted to pass off the role and actually wanted to pass it on to the saint of killers. Mm -hmm. And while I don't know if the show is gonna follow that same pattern, yeah. it will be curious to see whether or not the same outcome of that reluctancy will happen in the show. All right, now let's talk about the grail. Jesse is of course captive, Hairstar hasn't gone up the elevator, and the whole plan is to basically have Jesse kill the Allfather. Now, it sure looked like Jesse accomplished his mission pretty easily. Yeah. But we soon find out that he didn't aim for the head and he shot him in the belly. You know, just a pro tip, just aim for the head when you're trying to kill a bad guy. Looking at you, Thor. So the Allfather survives the bullet shot and basically ties up Jesse and is going to take Genesis from him. 
Yeah, he's set up in a machine that could just extract it straight out and place it into whoever he deems. Now the problem is that we saw in season one, obviously, is that Genesis in the wrong body, mm -hmm. uh, basically it makes you explode, self-internal combustion. So, um, gotta be the perfect person, mm -hmm. which Jesse seems to be, right? The perfect mix of good and evil right. to contain Genesis and not s I I explode. Right, you need that right blend of Tom Brady in you. Exactly. So. Uh, a funny little segment here is when we see the multiple Humperdoos, or messiahs, um, that they have basically cloned in order to do this testing on. Right, there are so many of them so that they were becoming expendable. Right. Like, it was a way to test to see what is the right combination of DNA, and they tried so many types. I was dying laughing at the windshield wiper mm -hmm. um, cleaning off and then everyone spraying off the blood in the room. It was extremely grotesque, but, you know, perfect for this show. Right. Um, funny little thing. And then also, um, we find out that the Allfather has a special hiding place for Jesse's soul. Yeah, it is a place that you do not want to look into. It's up his ass, and I hope they never explore that in the next couple episodes. No, I hope when he gets his soul back, we just it told he gets it. I don't want to see him reaching up there. It's a DNA cocktail. This represents a genetic combination of two persons. In this case, Serena Williams and Louis XVI. All right, so they use Tom Brady, the perfect mixture, like you said, good and evil. Um, I'm guessing that Wayne Brady is the good. I would assume so, unless there's something we don't know about him. Is Wayne Brady gonna have to choke a bitch? It made me think that they're about good and good versus evil in this show, mm -hmm. and the other um, mashups between people that could be good and evil. And obviously, the first thing that came to mind was Eugene and Hitler. Yeah, good would, and evil. Would you get hygiene then? <laughs> so the good news for the Grail, if Tom Brady doesn't work out, mm -hmm. they could use hygiene. Yeah. Gage's own special concoction. That's some good hygiene or bad hygiene right there. Yeah, probably bad. Mm -hmm. um, I gotta say also, it's pretty funny and very timely mm -hmm. that the Grail wants to give a complete moron the strongest power the universe has ever seen. Yeah. One thing that's definitely stood out over the last few episodes um, is the relationship between Hairstar and Jesse, um, it's much different than what we saw in the comic books. Yeah, in the comics, it was much more black and white. Like, you knew exactly where they stood, and they didn't really like each other. No, yeah. But here in the show, they kind of operate in that gray area where they seem like they're almost friends, like frenemies, if you will. He looks like something out of Ripley's Believe It or Not, but he's head of the most powerful organization in the world. He is trying to put Genesis inside Humphrey. Do you have to do something? I agree, something has to be done, but... Want. Let's hop on over to Osaka where Jody, Tulip, and Featherstone are on a mission to hunt down a ton of these souls for Grandma. Um, it's a fun little team up between these three characters that you wouldn't necessarily ever see or be cheering for. Right, like even when they're tackling a serious topic like sexual harassment, they can make it seem so over the top and crazy that it was just comedy gold watching the three of them interact together. Totally, and if you're easily offended, obviously this episode is probably not for you, but it was uh, a pretty comedic bit and how they were going to infiltrate uh, the headquarters in Osaka. Now, I was shocked how easy it was to break into such a headquarters with, you know, souls of all things. Right. I, how does a gum break the entire security system? Like, I, I don't know the science behind it. I would love I, for someone yeah. to explain that to me. It's pretty funny. I don't think there is any science behind it at all. So many things I could say around now, but... Featherstone tulip dynamic. It's very interesting. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit forced. Mm -hmm. a little, they're, they're like m making too many jokes back and forth to each other. Sometimes you think it might be genuine. Like one moment in this episode, we thought, oh my God, uh, maybe they crossed that bridge. Uh, is it, do you enjoy it? I'm growing to enjoy it. Like it's not my favorite part of the show by any means, but I actually do like that they have that rivalry and they do clash, but they play off each other so well. And mm -hmm. that's really a kudos to the actors involved. Yeah. So they successfully get the souls, a whole bunch of them in a briefcase. Um, and then on the flight back, the angel of death shows up. And I mm -hmm. thought there's no way that Tulip is gonna get out of this. Right. But then we found out that the angel of death does not do her homework or Satan didn't provide her with a photo of Tulip O'Hare. Yeah, he just got a very basic description and she was trying to figure it out based off that and clearly was not enough info. This is all I have to say. Hey, if you're sending someone named the angel of death to bring another person back down to hell. 
let's just make sure that you don't, you know, mis mistake the identity of, the, some, of that person, right? Yeah, you, uh, I mean, you'd think. A photo, a photo would have just yeah. changed the whole game. Yeah. All right, over in New Orleans with the Children of Blood and Cassidy and Acarius, they kidnap Hoover, who's going to try to kill them or capture some of them. I think he was going for kill, but like yeah. kill most, capture Cassidy. He had a lot of the things that you'd think would take down vampires, all the cliche items to, to hunt vampires, but it does no good because they catch him in the act of basically plotting to get them and uh, he's getting kidnapped and held for ransom, mm -hmm. but it turns out that Hairstar and the Grail do not care about Hoover. Not at all, that texting scene between them, just showing how little he cared for his life, I mean, I hate to call it comedy gold because it's so dark, but man, I could not stop laughing. And to be honest, I don't think either of us were shocked because no. you can tell that's the kind of relationship that they have. Yeah. For Hairstar, all of these people are expendable. Right, and Hoover has been constantly like failing him over and over again that Hairstar really does not care. Right. Uh, so then they decide uh, you know, how they should kill him. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a hysterical bit when they bring up bees and a reference to Wicker Man. Oh, my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Anything but the bees. <laughs> I was, uh, I was la I could not stop laughing at this. And it turns out that the guy that offered this uh, opinion or this idea, mm -hmm. he actually is a beekeeper. Yeah, it went from this outrageous idea to, all right, let's try the bees. <laughs> yeah, so instead of actually killing him, they ultimately decide to turn him. Right, they decide to give him the same choice that they all face, death or eternal life. Chill out. Jesus. Yeah, but Cassidy is disappointed that he's not getting powers like Icarus. Like, this is third person, and still, he's not developing the same powers that Icarus has shown at the bars. Right, so Cassidy's tried to fly, um, he's unable to do so. Um, and we talked about this last time, you know, mm -hmm. we had a theory about how Acarius gets his powers. He right. turns these humans into vampires and he, dr he kills them immediately when they're not too strong, mm -hmm. drains them of their blood, and he's acquiring all these stronger, he's like a super vampire or something like that. Right. Um, now the thing is, Cassidy catches Acarius in the action right. of basically minutes before he was going to kill Hoover. Yeah, I mean, it also seemed like poor... A poor idea by Akarius to just throw away the murder items, like the little neck pillow she had. Yes, please just hide, in the hide, the, hide the evidence before <laughs> yeah. you're, yeah, when you're or gonna do this. burn it? Yes, like, exactly. find a way to get rid of it better. Yeah. But yeah, Cassidy now knows and has caught him and Hoover escaped. Hoover escaped, yeah, Hoover escaped. Cassidy didn't put up any any fight with Akarius. Akarius is clearly a lot stronger of a vampire. Mm -hmm. um, but bottom line, Hoover escaped. So, um, you know, Akarius' plan of getting even more powerful um, did not go through this time. Now the episode ends at a bus stop, another fun and creative use of those location titles. Um, and we've seen in episodes past, I, mainly in the first season I believe, mm -hmm. that uh, there are specific buses to take mm -hmm. to get to and from hell. Right, uh, or just to any location, like even to heaven or yeah, hell. Yeah, like, to, it to any other like, realm, right? Right, the yeah. realm bus, if you will. Exactly, so they're at a bus stop and it is the Santa Killers, Hitler, mm -hmm. Eugene, Angel of Death, and Featherstone, a group of characters that we've never seen in one location together. Right, it was very cool to see that because in the comics, we know that the Angel of Death and the Saint of Killers have that interesting relationship. So it's kind of cool to see them at the same spot and mm -hmm. to see where they're gonna go with it. All right guys, time now to talk about some questions and predictions that we have moving forward now. Major spoilers, I wanna warn you guys again, uh, if we get into some comic book spoilers, please do not get mad. Um, if you don't wanna hear any of this stuff, then just step away now and come back next week, okay? So first, let's talk about the Grail. Um, they have one, it seems like they have one more shot mm -hmm. to try the uh, the transfer of Genesis, so to speak, into the real Humperdoo, the real Messiah. Right, I think in the comics, we see Humperdoo meets his demise by the Allfather landing on him by falling out of right. the helicopter. Yeah. I think here, Jesse's going to kill Humperdoo by having Genesis go into him, but it will be Hairstar altering the DNA to ruin the Grail's last shot. Or how about when Humperdoo finally gets Genesis and everything seems like it's going to the Grail's plan, the Allfather walks in only to have Humperdoo blow up, killing the both of them at the same time. That That's spot on. If this happens, AMC come holler at us because that is probably the perfect way to kill them both off. Mm -hmm. And then Genesis gets sucked back into Jesse and we can move on. And he wouldn't have to reach up there to get a soul. So. Oh, that's right. The soul would just pop out and lay in the middle of the ground and he wouldn't have to go inside him. Yeah. 
Win-win. <laughs> now, one detail at the end there, Hilter, or Hitler, whoever you want to call him, he made a phone call. By the way, why would the Santa killers let him use the phone? I'm not sure how he managed that off or whether he just sent the text, but either way. The Saint way, is a little overconfident, I think. Yeah, yeah don't, let, don't let Hitler use a phone to call, any, call for any help. Although, to be fair, what can that guy do against the Santa killers? That's a really good point. Now, I don't know about you, but one of my most favorite parts of this whole episode has to be Vampire Hoover. Absolutely. <laughs> um, seeing him pop up with the fangs, that was like an amazing moment. And I really do like the idea of Vampire Hoover mm -hmm. um, teaming up with Cassidy mm -hmm. and helping go save Jesse in uh, kind of overthrowing the Grail. Because as we know, the Grail does not really respect Hoover for the person he is. And he now he knows that as well. I hope this isn't just a two episode arc where we only see him and then he ultimately meets his demise. I want Vampire Hoover to stick around. Like yeah, we take down Akarius, take down the Grail, become a fixture of the show. Hell yes, I'm totally all for that one. Um, guys, let us know if you have any comments, questions, any predictions that you have moving forward for the next uh, two episodes of this season. And uh, we'll, we'll be here next week for episode nine. Cool, see you then. See you guys.